Number 53. Account for the relationship between the rate of a reaction and its activation energy. Okay, so we have to basically talk about some type of relationship. Generally, if they're asking for a relationship, it's either going to be a direct relationship or an indirect relationship. Whether both of these will be increasing or one's increasing and one's decreasing. So let's figure it out. Now, just know that your activation energy, which is EA, right, is the energy that is required to get over the hump, right? It's the minimum amount of energy that is needed to make your products. And the activation energy is always going to be from your starting material, which is always going to be on the left, right? A plus B, in this case, are your reactants. And you got to get over that hump to get to C and D, your products. This is just a general diagram of energy versus extent of reaction, but I like to call this time, right? As time progresses, you're turning your reactants into your products and your reactants with enough kinetic energy has to exceed or at least meet the activation energy that's predetermined to make your products. If A and B collide with each other, and they collide at a low rate, you're not going to be able to re reach that predetermined complex, which is the transition state. The highest tippy point is called the transition state. Um, so if you don't have enough kinetic energy and your rate is low, you won't be able to... Uh-oh. Somebody must be outside. Ah, gotta love the dogs, right? But anyway, where was I? Learning with distractions. So, um, with a low amount of energy, right, a low rate, you're not going to be able to reach over your predetermined uh, activation energy. But now, here's the thing, right? We're going to assume that we're going to make our uh, products, right? And we can only do that if you want to increase the rate of reaction. Increase the rate of reaction... we are always going to add a catalyst. And a catalyst is basically just an enzyme. It's a protein that will make you go from your reactants to your products, but it will shorten your activation energy. It just provides another, uh, a, a different pathway to get to your products. And generally speaking, if you do have an enzyme, it's going to be an easier pathway to do. Catalysts and enzymes, they're pretty big compounds. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to start and end at the same, but what's going to happen is the activation energy is going to drop. So what's going to happen is, hey, maybe we're at here, right? And then we're going to go to our, pro oh boy, we're going to go to our products. The idea here is that the start and the end should be roughly the same. It should be actually the same, exact same. You do not lose energy from your reactants and your products. So now for this one that I drew, which is very choppy, but whatever, I don't have a straight hand, um, the activation energy is only this amount. So I'm going to say that this is the activation energy with a catalyst. And this big one is the activation, or we'll say this, you know, this pathway is the activation energy without a catalyst. Okay, so now think about these two as a roller coaster ride. Think about this big one, which I mean, you have a lot of fun, right? You go, whoo. Think of this one as like Nitro at Six Flags, right? And think of this one as like Mickey Mouse Club, woo woo, right? Sp Space Mountain or whatever. Actually, I don't really think that that's a good, uh, that's a good idea because you might get a little tricked up with that. But the idea here is that um, the longer that it takes to chug, 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 chug up a roller coaster, that's going to add some time, right? For these, all you got to do is just chug up a little bit and then you have some fun. So which one has the higher activation energy? Is this guy, right? The one that was before. So if you have a high activation energy, what's going to happen to your rate? 
Think about in terms of how fast these two lines are going. Which one's going to be faster? The one that's drawn, you know, with less amount is going to be the faster one. So the catalyst one is always going to be the one that is faster. The one that doesn't have a catalyst is always going to be the one that's slower, mainly because it just takes so much long time to reach the activation energy. So with the high activation energy, your rate of reaction is going to be much slower. And in this case, the relationship is a indirect relationship because as one is going up, the other one is coming down. And that is the final answer. So account for the relationship between a rate and the activation energy. The higher the activation energy, the slower the rate's going to be, mainly because you got to chuck, you know, to the tippy 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 top, where if you just add maybe a catalyst, uh, drops the activation energy, and, you know, it goes quicker. And that's it. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Thank you for viewing the video. Love hanging out with you guys. And thanks for coming to the channel. Uh, we also got physics and math videos at the moment with more subjects coming your way, hopefully in the future. We love helping you guys out. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart, my brother's heart. We really do appreciate all you guys. And we hope you're having a great day, okay? I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.